Okay. Anyway, so here we are. Mirage. See, I'm just, I'm literally just showing off the, no. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, this welcome to the very basic CS tutorial. I'm joined by the lovely Lux, also known as Zoe. Say hello. No way. <laughs> it's, you don't understand the YouTube man. I'm a successful YouTuber. You didn't oh, know that, my. did you? Uh, not quite. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna love. right. So, so basics. It's very difficult to do a video uh, to answer the question how to be good at CS. And again, I don't want this to be like a fucking rant for 30 minutes of me rambling. So you have to interrupt me if I start talking too much. Well, don't make sense. But it's you would agree, right? It's it's super difficult. If someone just says how how do I, how do I get good at Counter Strike, it's like impossible to answer that question. I mean, yeah, I'm two K hours in, and I'm still not good at the game, so you know. Yeah, it's a it's a big commitment. I think the best comparison is something like chess. Like if you look at chess um, and how you can play it for hours and hours and hours and still have no knowledge of like uh, a higher level. Um, obviously you don't need to be at a high level, but knowing some fundamental things, uh, will help make the game more enjoyable and help it feel like you're actually making progress. So I know that all of you are sort of the people that are watching this are of a mixed skill level. I know some of you have some experience, some of you don't have any. Um, so I'm going to go over some stuff, which I'm sure some people already know, but hopefully there's some stuff in this video that will be useful regardless. And at the end we'll, we'll do like some executes like very, very basic executes that you can copy and should be super useful, specifically on Mirage. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is just shooting styles. So shooting in Counter-Strike, the, the best thing to remember is that you're not accurate whilst moving. Uh, unless you have a cheating keyboard, eh? <laughs> uh, but anyway, so for example, if I hold down W and shoot, you'll see that my bullets are just uh, spraying into the air. It's also because I'm holding down. But even if I was just holding a, a, a strafe key, strafe keys are A and D, even if I'm just holding a strafe key and I shoot, I'm not accurate. You see my bullet is not going where my crosshair is going. That's because there is a thing called movement inaccuracy. So at the most basic of basic levels, you need to be stationary when you start shooting at someone, not moving. Now you can do a technique called counter strafing, which I'm not going to talk about too much in this video because it's a little too advanced, I would say, for beginners. But counter strafing, in very fundamental terms, is pressing the opposite strafe key that you were to moving. So if you were using A, the A key to strafe left, and when the second you hit D, for that second you are accurate. So if you hit D and then A, you're accurate, like this. So this gives you accuracy. This is called counter strafing. It's a very slow counter strafing. When you get good at it, you can do it quite quickly. But you don't really have to worry about that uh, a super beginner level, right? I mean, I can kind of do it. Yeah, well, yeah, you've got 2,000 hours, though. These guys got no time at all. It's, you can't, you don't have tough. the noob card anymore. It's, you realize it's that. It's not that tough. It's not that tough. Okay, but you, the main thing to remember is do not be moving while shooting. There are some guns that have an exception to this, which I'll talk about when we talk about, like, the meta of guns. But for the main weapons you're using, the basic thing to remember is if you're, if you're going to get into a firefight with someone, if you're going to start shooting at someone, you want to be stationary when you start shooting them. Um, until you have an, a, an understanding of counter strafe. And if you want to be, to be able to counter strafe, all you have to do is go on YouTube, look up how to counter strafe, and there are much better um, examples uh, than anything I can give you. So that's uh, the shooting thing. The other general tip, again, this is for real beginners, is always have your crosshair at head height. If you headshot someone, you do the most damage. Obviously, you do more damage landing a headshot than a leg shot. The exception is the AWP. If you have the AWP, you do not want to aim at the head. You don't want to be aiming at headshot height. You want to be aiming at body height because it's a one-shot kill to the chest. It's not a one-shot kill if you hit the legs, but chest and above, it's a one-shot kill. And obviously, uh, the chest is a bigger target than the head. So if you're the AWP of your team, we'll talk about roles a bit later, you want to be body height. Every other gun, always aim at headshot height. So if we go to A for a second, uh, if you go just go stand on default, like where you would plant the bomb as a T. So for example, if you think that there's an enemy here, instead of uh, running like this and moving your crosshair on the floor and then going up, you want to have your crosshair ready at headshot height, so you check the angles and then you have your crosshair ready on headshot height. So always keep your headshot high. You can keep each other accountable for this. So if you see your teammates just running around with the crosshair on the floor, you can say, hey, uh, you know, watch your crosshair and just have it at headshot height. Very simple 
very beginner tip to help. Okay, go back to spawn. Okay, so for buy meta, um, the first round in compare. Also, all these tips apply to competitive mode. Casual, if you play casual, it's fine if you enjoy it, but it's not really conducive to improving at the game. The best ways to improve the game are to play deathmatch and arms race just to get a feel of the guns and then go into actual competitive. And then once you feel that you have some understanding of competitive, then you can play Premier. Uh, CS matchmaking system is fairly good at keeping you against players of similar rank with similar hours. So you should be fine. Um, so play deathmatch and arms race until you get the basic shooting and remembering the movement mechanics down and then you can go into compare. But when you go into compare, there's something called the economy matter. So as you can see, we have a lot of cash because we're in a warm-up uh, mode. But you have a set amount of cash each round. You start with 800. But I'm just not going to go over the entire economy. It'll take too long. But I'm just going to give you some very, very basic tips for each round. So pistol round, you always want to buy this, Kevlar. You don't want to buy nades on pistol unless you have a specific strat on mind, which I don't think you will do. But I would just buy uh, Kevlar, and then you'll have your starter pistol, which will be your USP, your P2000, or your Glock. That's all you need to do for pistol round. You don't want to buy other pistols. You might be thinking, oh, I'll buy a Tech 9. You don't want to do that because if you do buy like a 5.7, you won't have enough money for your uh, Kevlar, uh, your Kevlar, excuse me. And if you get shot when you don't have armor anywhere on the body, you are massively inaccurate for, I think, how long is aim punch? Like two seconds after you get hit, I think. So every round you buy this on Compet, Kevlar Vest. Every round that you're buying, you buy a Kevlar Vest. One, one. This most important thing. When you have, uh, after pistol round, you obviously start buying Kevlar and Helmet. So pistol round, buy Kevlar Vest. Every other round, buy Kevlar and Helmet every single round. This does, uh, unless you already have armor and you didn't die. Obviously, if you die, you lose your armor, so you need to replenish it. You can see your armor next to your health at the bottom of the screen. Bottom left is your money, then you have your health. Your armor is the number in the shield next to your health. And then you have your ammo and your inventory on your own. So, Kevlar, Kevlar vest every other round that you're buying. Now, you might not be buying, so when would you not buy, Zoe? After we lose a round. Well, yeah, if, you, if your economy is not in good shape, so people cannot afford the guns that they want, you do what's called an eco so that you can save money for the next rounds. Now, I know for a fact that James and Max, James especially, I'm, I'm, Max probably knows, but he hasn't played for a long while, uh, know the economy in, in, in the context of like the basic rules around it, so they can explain this. But if you're saving money because you want more money for the next round, so let's say we lose the pistol round, we lose round one, we will save the second round, we want to buy a pistol. Uh, and the best pistols you can buy is kind of up to you. These are the ones I have on my loadout. I have the P250, the 5.7, the CZ, and the Desert Eagle. For the easiest pistol I'd say to use is the 5.7, right? Yeah. And Tech 9 on T side. Usually people buy P250. Or P250. No. P250 is fine as well. Uh, one of those two. I would not buy Deagle and unless you're um, unless practicing. You're yeah, okay. Cool. <laughs> Then, okay, well the good thing is they don't know what you're like with the Deagle, so you might believe that. Um, but unless you're practicing with the Deagle and you're a beginner, I mean, if you have more experience, maybe you want to pick it, but if you're a beginner, I just would stay away from the Deagle, just go 5.7 or te uh, Tech 9, they're super powerful. On mid-round, when you can't afford a rifle, but you're buying, so this is like the second round, the best guns in the game are the MP9 and the MAC-10, so you want these on the top of your loadout list. So... MP9 is super strong, MAC-10 is super strong. The best things with these two SMGs is they emit one of the first rules I told you, which is movement accuracy. They're still fairly accurate whilst moving. So if you have an MP9 or a MAC-10, you can use movement and get an advantage. And obviously you have your, what's your Mac, uh, MP9 trick that you do? Oh, it's the best gun to jump and strip with. It's so accurate. It's yeah. more accurate jumping instead of running. Yeah, so this is one gun that if you have a position that you can jump shot, which I'm sure we'll see one a bit later, you can use the MP9. The other SMGs are fine, but they're not optimal. But if there's one that you really like using, that's totally fine. These are the SMGs I have in my uh, secondary loadout. This is not like CSGO where you can buy anything. You actually have to pick what guns you want in your loadout. An XM can be very good if you're close range, obviously. And P90 is very good too. 
The only issue with P90 for beginners is that it's kind of like a crutch, in my opinion, in the sense that because it's easier to use than a rifle, you're more likely to buy it a lot, but because it's so expensive, it actually works against you, because when you play against better opponents, they'll easily punish you when you play P90, and you're not using that time to invest uh, in the main guns, the main guns you should be using in the game. So the main guns you should be using in the game are the two M4s and the AK-47, unless you're an AWPA, which we'll talk about in a second. As to whether you want to use the M4A4 or the M4A1S, that's kind of up to you. In very basic fundamental terms, the A1S is better for shooting through smokes um, and also is easier to control, but the A4A4 is the best gun purely in terms of um, fire rate and how much damage you can do, and plus you have 10 more bullets in the magazine. So, Eco, first round by Kevlar. If you're looking to save money and you're, and you're IGL, which we'll talk about in a second, calls an Eco by the 5.7 or P250. If you don't have enough money for an M4, buy an MP9, and remember that you can move with it. Otherwise, buy an M4. And then finally, if you're Max, which I'm assuming he's going to take his role, but maybe someone else will take it. Max is a better author than you, by the way. How do you respond to that? Mm, <laughs> I actually don't think so. Yeah, I don't okay. Think so. <laughs> so. Anyway, so if you're the AWPA, you're dropping your AWP to your 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 teammate who's the AWPA. That's a fairly comprehensive meta on uh, rundown of economy, right? Have I missed anything? No, I don't think so. That's the basics at least. Yeah, so for grenades, uh, obviously the most important grenade is probably the smoke grenade. The smoke grenade allows you to block off a choke point. The advantage of a smoke is if there's someone coming through a smoke, it's very difficult for them to see you and kill you. So if you just stay that side, I'll show you. So for example, if the cr if the smoke's not there, I can just literally put my crosshair on Zoe. If I'm running through the smoke, I've got no idea where she is, and then I have to react to it. So you want to throw this in choke points. Molotov on CT side is actually honestly kind of shit now, unfortunately, oh, because they metered it. Um, but a Molotov will delay people. The explosive grenade is good for using in smokes, ironically, because you can now pop the smoke and see behind it, otherwise it's not that great, and flashbangs can be used to give your teammate an advantage. Now here's a general tip for beginners, which I think is very important. Try not to have too much of a worry or fixation on grenades as a beginner. Focus on just your aim, positioning, and killing and spraying, and not worrying too much about grenades. Have a set smoke that you throw every round, for example if I'm the A player, again we'll talk about rollers in a minute, but if I'm an A player, I throw the same uh, A smoke every round, I smoke ramp right, and then that's it for nades. I don't have to worry about nades anymore. Uh, similarly on T side. I think a, a, a big problem that beginners have is they buy all nades. They buy the smoke, the molly, the flash. They don't know how to use them, and then a lot of the time they get caught off guard because they have a nade in their hands instead of just holding an angle with a gun. So don't worry too much about nades unless you have um, a, an explicit use for them. At least until you're like a bit more experienced and a bit more comfortable in, in positions. Yeah, team flashing is exceptionally rude. Never do, that. Um, do you know what Max's Steam name is? Of course you don't, no. but he's called Flashmaster. Oh, it's not now, but he used to be called Flashmaster. For his oh. propensity, his Wait, ability with the flashbang. You couldn't break smoke in CSGO? No, no, no. What? I know, it was shit. Anyway, now we're going to talk about um, the roles and then the the default roles on CT side. So the first two roles that you ought to work out amongst yourselves is the first one, uh, which is a very easy one to pick up, is who's the AWPA? Now you don't need an AWPA, but it is nice to have a consistency and have one person that's always playing AWP. Now again, I assume Max might want this role, he might not, but you want to have one person that uh, plays AWP and whoever that is wants to practice in deathmatch or whatever with the AWP. If you're not playing AWP, although it is good to have some ability with it, it's not necessary. And only one person, as again, as a fundamental beginner tip, because I'm not going to talk about double AWP setups, only one person should be AWPing in a game, right? Yeah. So uh, have one person that's your dedicated AWPer, choose who it is, and then from that point onwards, if they want an AWP, you drop it to them, and they play their role as an AWP. And, it, and if you're not an AWPer, you don't um, play it. I mean, that's my tip. Who knows? If you're playing for fun and you just want to have free orbs, go ahead. Have a blast. But typically in meta, only one person orb. Why? Well, because it's very expensive. It's $4,750. 
um, and it's very uh, costly to lose and it's quite difficult in certain senses but it's also easy to get kills in other senses. It's a specialist role I guess. The other role is the IGL, the in-game leader and again similar to York you want to decide who amongst you is the IGL. At a very basic level uh, I recommend the IGL be the person with the most experience in the game amongst you. Don't know who that is. Uh, you can talk about it, I guess. Doesn't have to be, of course, but uh, at a, a very basic level, that should be the guy calling whether you're buying or ecoing and saying, okay, we buy this round, okay, we eco this round, and also calling what to do on T side. And we'll give you some tips of what you can do on T side when we get there. So that's the IGL and the Orpa. Everyone else is just playing standard positions. So you can talk about that before game, you can talk about that in a warm up, or you can work it out after playing a couple games, who likes what. But yeah, that's that's my tip or, or suggestions on how to play. Now we'll talk about positions. So let's go to B and we'll we'll go to default positions. So on CT side, there's something called a default. As the name suggests, it's basically just the standard positions that you play on CT side. And every map has a meta default, meaning uh, every map is different in, in, in defaults, but there is a lot of overlap. So typically, at a most basic level, you have uh, two people playing B site, two people playing A site, and one person playing middle. However, it's uh, more complex than that, because on a site, the two people to each site, there's one person which is called the anchor and one person called the rotator. So Lux is playing the anchor position and uh, she's responsible for apartments. So her job is to gain information and prevent people from, uh, prevent T's, excuse me, from rushing apps. Whereas I would be playing the rotator position, meaning that I move away, I rotate from the site. So the anchor is responsible for the site and the rotator moves towards helping their mid player and helping their B player, if you're the B rotator. If you're the A rotator, you move towards helping the mid player and helping your A player. Now, how do you know what to help? Well, hopefully, because you're a pre-made, you should actually have very good communication and your anchor players can tell you uh, if they need help or not. So, uh, I play, actually, uh, B rotator. That's my preferred spot. And uh, so, when you play CS, you want to kind of play the same spot every time. You won't get that luxury every single time if you're solo queuing, but if you're playing in a team, which I'm assuming that you're going to be able to, you will have that luxury and you can work out who plays where. And by doing so, you can have consistency because you can practice the same spot and understand how it works. So when you go onto a map like Mirage, maybe go on an offline server or just figure it out as you play, work out who plays B anchor, who plays B rotator, who plays middle, who plays A anchor, uh, sorry, A ray rotator, and who plays A anchor. And for each position, there are a variance of positions within that, that role, right? So as an anchor, you could jump spot uh, house. Jump, if you jump spot for me, I'll show you. It's very difficult to um, kill this person. If they're jump spotting effectively, which you're doing okay-ish, I guess. <laughs> a little bit of criticism for that. But anyway, um, and by jump spotting, you can gain information when the opponent is pushing. And then you can call and say, hey, they're pushing B, they're pushing B. And then your rotator goes, okay, okay, I need to help. And then I can put my cross there where they're likely to come and have a crossfire uh, with my teammate. And you can also use nades to delay. That's an obvious nade spot. If you come mid and play window for a second, especially because you have AWP. Um, alternatively, if your mid player calls uh, help and says, I need help, I'm window and they're out mid. So you would take one shot with the AWP and then you can come out and help your mid player, right? So that's basically the roles. And it's the exact same thing on A. So if you go CT, actually you play connect so you can play rotator here. So this would be the anchor spot I would choose and I would be jump spotting for information. Now obviously jump spotting maybe is a bit advanced. Maybe you're just playing A site, so you just pick a, pick a spot on A site. Excuse my terrible movement. Um, so you're just picking a spot and just waiting, getting information, and then when you need help, your mid player, who is window, can walk up, up here, upstairs, and say, okay, I can check palace for you, I can check ramp for you. And that's the, the very basics of uh, CT default, right? Have I missed anything? One thing that we never get is a connector player. Yeah, you... That's... Sorry. Well, they're playing in a team, so they should have... Um, they should be able to 
have like these roles sorted out. If you pug a lot and you get to like a decent level, you'll realize that certain positions people just typically aren't very good at and they make the map way harder than it has to be. Mid is a, a super important on Mirage. It's also important on a lot of, lot of other maps, but especially Mirage. Um, so you want to have these positions where you have mid control at the start of the round. So you have your B rotator going up short here and your A rotator coming into connector here. And then late rounds, uh, or if your your anchor calls for help, you can help, right? Yeah, pretty much. It. Okay, so top tips for each role, just very quickly. Again, I don't want this to be too long, but um, I'll give you some tips. As an anchor, one thing to bear in mind is you want to gain information. Point one, you need to be gaining information. Two, you need to be not dying immediately. So if, for example, you go into B and you're just charging down B house, maybe there's terrorists coming here and you die, you get a lot less time for your mid rotator to help you than if you play a more passive angle like bench or you jump spot and you knew that they were coming apps and then you can buy more time. So one, gain information. Two, try and stay alive if you're an anchor. If you're a rotator, my top tips would be have good communication with your mid player so you know if there are enemies in front of you or not. And two, um, be conscientious of patterns. If you're dying because you're pushing mid every round, like they're killing you round after round after round, stop playing aggressive on middle. Play more passively. Pick an angle where you're more just defensive. Let your mid guy know that you're doing that so that they know, okay, my teammate's not going to be peeking short and uh, adapt uh, on the fly. Also, if you're the IGL of the role that I told, told you earlier, that the leader, and you notice that A is getting hit all the time and B is never getting hit, you can tell your B rotator to maybe play a different position, right? You don't have to stick to the default no matter what. If they're never going B and they're hitting A over and over and over again, the IGL could say, okay, let's try one person um, connector, two on A site, one window and one playing short, for example. So you can adapt, you don't have to do it non-stop, uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, everything, right? On CT meta at least. Yes? Should learn some basic nades too, to be honest. Like also, well, items. yeah, I guess so. Well, for defensive, uh, defensive nades, if you're the B anchor, just throw, uh, the, okay, uh, this should give you a, a, an exact way how to play Bianca. Jump spot like this, um, with a nade, and then when you see someone throw a molly, and then immediately take a more defensive angle. If you're an anchor, if you're, sorry, if you're a bead rotator, you can throw flashes over this. And you can flash middle. If you're window, you can uh, flash out a window by bouncing a flash off there. If they smoke window, which uh, I don't know if it's going to happen at beginner level. I, can't, I, I haven't played beginner for ages, but a tip you can do is you can throw this grenade. And you will take damage, but you can get a kill there a lot of the time. And then uh, connector, you just bounce the smoke off this. And then you can peer over and the opponents will think that connector's smoked. So they'll be like, oh, I can, I can go down mid, I'm safe. And then you can... Uh, Easily get kills like that. And then uh, if you're the ramp guy, obviously you can smoke ramp early, you can smoke palace early. As a CT. Okay. I don't think you need any like set nades on CT side. Remember, they're very much beginners. I, I don't want to go like too advanced because they're just going to be like, what the fuck? You know? You'd be shocked how many nades people in silver lobbies know. Well, yeah, well, you can also look them up as well. How dare you insinuate my friends with silver? They're the best of the best. Anyway, let's go T side. My fate side is better. More oh, we have to restart, I think, to have any money. Right, T side. So T side is similar, but also different. You still have your IGL, you still have your Orpa. But the basics is that CT side you're defending, T side you're attacking. So you're more proactive on T side and you're dictating the game a lot more. Whereas in counter terrorist side you're reacting to what the T's are doing. So as to, in terms of what you want to do, you can go A, go B, go mid. Typically at beginner level I recommend you always, always, always group as a 5. 
Um, there's very little reason to have a lurk at low level CS. Uh, it's more, more often than not, it's just going to not work. So you want to abuse the fact that you're a pre-made, that you're all on mic together, and go as a 5. So if we go A, uh, with A, if you ever want to go A, you typically always want to go 4 people ramp and 1 person palace. Never ever ever have more than 1 person palace, okay? 4 people ramp, 1 person palace. Then you would throw whatever nades, we'll show you a few in a second, and then you would come up A with your AKs or whatever, clear your angles, and then take the site. Remember when the person plants the bomb, whoever's planting the bomb, whoever spawns with it, to cover that person. If the bomb planter dies and you're trying to plant the bomb and you die and your teammate's not covering, feel free to flame the shit out of them because they've let you down. <laughs> okay, don't flame them, but uh, it's really annoying when you die with the bomb. So make sure you cover whoever's planting. Once you've got the bomb... Okay, interesting. Once you've got the bomb planted... Then you have to cover the bomb, and all of a sudden you're defensive, and now the counter-terrorists are offensive because they have to take control of the site and smoke and defuse the bomb. So, aggressive, plant the bomb. Once the bomb is being planted, so as you see your teammate planting the bomb, cover the bomb planter. As soon as that bomb is down, the first message that should blink in your brain is get into a good position immediately. As soon as the bomb's down, remember, so let's say we, we went from spawn, we came to A, the B players and the mid players are having to rotate to A to defuse the bomb. So we've got the bomb down. As soon as the bomb's down, we need to get into a good position. We don't need to push and, and play aggressively. We just need to get into a good position where we can just hold an angle. Uh, what's some good angle? Uh, yeah, there's a good position. You can play under wood here. You could play this very little sneaky spot, which is called Ninja. Sandwich is good. You can play here and just hold up. Actually, I don't particularly like sandwich. If you, if you have a, a fair amount of time, getting into palace is probably the best position because you can play the bomb and then you can flash off this. Oh, excuse me, I didn't do it correctly. There you go. And then they will be blind and kill them. Um, but get into a good position. So, aggress. Cover your bomb planter in caps. Please cover your bomb planter. It sucks dying if you're planting the bomb. I say that because of PTSD of so many times I've died because fucking idiot teammates aren't covering me. Once the bomb is down, um, get into good positions. If you're wondering where to plant, there are a bunch of options, but default is here. So default is the most common plant spot. But you can plant for other areas, so I'm not going to get into that. Video is already going to be too long. Uh, what well, well, sort of quick A grenades for you. For, so two of these can be thrown. One is a stair smoke. You come here, you line up, put your crosshair here, put your crosshair on this a gap, throw a smoke. This will come, uh, this will smoke stairs. So it will block off this guy and it also blocks off uh, this bench area. What are you smoking? So do you want to, so you face this, How do, where do you aim yours? Mine is a bit tricky because you need to have someone covering ramp and holding the pause or you're gonna die throwing the nade and it has happened so Yeah, so you can just pause the video when I did it and just copy it there. And then uh, CT smoke is very easy. Yeah. You come here, it's safe. So you come here, then you put your crosshair in between this beam and this sort of thing and then do a jump throw. Jump is you, f you hit the jump button as you throw the grenade. And this will cover CT. It's a good smoke because it's in front of the um, ticket thing. Okay, okay. So if they're on top of the ticket, it's they can't really see you unless they grenade it. So there's uh, free smokes. Again, if you want to learn a smoke, you just pause the video and then you can copy it in a practice server. Or you can just look it up. Uh, the two mid smokes we'll show you, which are very useful, is the window and connector smoke. Actually, I'm not going to show the window smoke because it's, it's, it's going to be too complex for them. Because it's got fucking start step movement. And I don't know the easy one. What's the connector smoke? Is that easy? Yeah, it's super easy. Well, you on the carpet and you just... Something. Where is it on the carpet? Wait, this corner? Damn. Is it just a jump throw? Yeah, it's just a jump throw. Well, I don't know if I got the lineup right. I mean, I did throw mine before yours. So. Oh, no, it, it is correct. There you go. So you can it's pause the video so and... Easy. And there's a connector smoke. So if you're going mid, you can throw this and then not worry. And then someone look up and it eats you. Because I have a window smoke, but I don't know if you guys are going to be able to do it. Uh, it's not that difficult. You aim here. Then you hit the D key whilst jumping. Um, 
and then it smokes window. But you could probably find easier ones. Now every lineup has a bit of movement. And then there's just a top mid smoke. If you don't want to smoke window, just do a top mid smoke, just top that. So you just stand on top of the bin, have the smoke, right side of the antenna. It's just not even a jump throw. And that'll smoke top mid. And then when you're coming out uh, mid, you can throw this flash, which lands behind the box. And then you can come out, and then someone else can smoke window the easy way, which is just doing that. There you go. But the, the thing is, if you have set grenades, then obviously you can execute. For B rush, you let's come B fast. B is a, a very good rush. If, I'm sure uh, if you've played with Russians, you'll see a lot of B rushes. Let's go. Uh, and then you can just... Throw flashes over. Yeah, I love this flash. You hate this flash, kind of. And then you can go out the window. And then check your angles and then plant. Default plant B is here, so plant where I'm standing. Unless you have teammates short, then you can plant here. And if you you have neither of those control, you can plant here. Right, I think that's basic defaults done. Oh yeah, this is a sneaky position. You can come here, and the opponent, as they walk in, they never, ever, ever will expect it, and it's a free kill for you. So, that's a, a free position. Oh, spray control. So, guns have recoil. If you just hold down mouse one... How did I forget this? This should be at the start of the video. If you just hold down mouse one... Oh, excuse me. If you just hold down mouse one, you'll see that your... your uh, Spray has a specific pattern. You can memorize the pattern and control your spray. Except that's kind of bullshit because it's not what anyone does, even at a super high level. No one does this. Um, but how do people control spray then? Well, it's very basic. It's very simple. So the main important thing to know is the top 10 bullets. So the top 10 bullets have to be in a, a similar spot. For the side to side stuff, again, I know that there's like recoil trainers. I've never really used one ever. The way I've learned to spray control is it, it's really difficult to explain. It's like a feeling that you just get naturally after playing a lot of time and you can sp you can just spray. Like, I kind of feel like doing like going onto a server and learning the pattern and like doing the anti-pattern is just a waste of time. Just control the first 10 bullets by just pulling your crosshair down at the correct pace. And then for the final, uh, 15 bullets, it comes down to feeling. You would agree I have very good spray control, right? Yeah, do you know what I do? The best thing. What? Crowd spray. Oh, you can also just crowd spray. Yeah, yeah. but you will get bullets. Yeah. Well, it also makes you very easy to hit, that's the problem. It works so well though. When you panic, just crouch. Okay, there you go. Top tip. If you panic, crouch. It works so well. Okay, well that's... I think that's... As much as anyone could ask for in a single video. Again, it's a mix of stuff, very basic fundamentals, but hopefully you can at least get one thing out of that mess that is useful. If you want to use, like, learn set grenades, the best thing to do is just look it up. The, f the thing is, it's almost impossible to find a good video if you type in how to get good at CS. That's very difficult to find a really instructive, useful video, at least in my opinion, because it's such a vague question. But if you type in how to get good spray control, you'll get very specific breakdowns of people teaching that one specific skill. Or how to smoke middle on Mirage, you will get very specific breakdowns of like six different ways you can smoke wit effectively. So try to be specific uh, in like what you're asking for, otherwise it's uh, very difficult to... to, to uh, answer but that's that's mirage but pretty much like what we talked about with um the default the fundamental positions having an anchor and a rotator a mid player an igl an orpa that applies to every single map there are nuances on each map and slight uh different takes and spins on how important aspects of the mid are so for example middle on mirage is super important whereas on a map like uh, inferno it plays very differently but the basics, the fundamentals of playing a spot over and over again, trying to get good at that specific spot, communicating so you know uh, where the opponent is likely to go and rotating effectively is something that you'll pick up uh, the more you play. Okay. All right. Well, Jesus. That well, should be enough. I'd be more upset if your friends get a higher rank than me. I'm gonna quit the game. Uh, well, they might. I mean, I am silver on freaking Anubis. 